So I have this GUI um, that if I run it, it creates a navigator class and it uses the navigator. Okay. To, to say, hey, navigator, can you do the step over for me? Can you do the step over backward for me? And the navigator okay. will do it. Um, and it, and basically you can see the step over. It's kind of complicated. It does one query and if that doesn't work, it does another query. And if that doesn't work, it does another query. Just in order okay. to do the step over. The okay. step over backward is even more complicated. And um, I <laughs> I wish it wasn't complicated, but I uh, this is the best idea I have so far. Um, okay. So, so yeah, you could potentially wire these up to your UI oh, so you can do step uh, over that way. Nice. Um, okay, uh, but anyway, the point of what I wanted to show you is, I, I got some of the way there with this UI, basically redoing what I did in JavaScript more or less, but, but also uh -huh. using the new data schema. Um, okay. I decided, okay, now I wanna tackle the, the tree display and also some other features like I want I want the source code. I want to be able to click on a variable in the source code and then be able to show the value of that of the variable, right? Okay, gotcha. either, either via like a little pop-up thing or just just in the other panel, just jump to that variable. So so okay. that it's easy to um, easy to navigate that way. Uh, but that kind of requires more sophisticated UI elements. And, yeah. and like the tree thing, I looked at your tree thing, mm -hmm. but, but I felt like it's, it, like it's not very, it's, it's very specific mm -hmm. to that use case. And it, I, I felt like there was a better way to do it. Okay. And, and I think you kind of have to, go about it in a complicated way because we didn't have a UI framework. That is true, yes. Um, so I, uh, and, and this is kind of a thing I've been thinking about and I didn't do it because I knew the UI framework can get complicated. Uh, so I was been deferring it, but I think maybe this is the time to do it. So I, uh, I started on it on Monday. Uh, so, oh, I'll just show you a couple of examples. And I, I was building this without access to the time traveling debugger, unfortunately. Because okay. at, okay. at the current state, it doesn't work. I kind of broke it in, the, in all of this reconstruction work. Uh, okay. So it, it's actually been very painful debugging some of these things. <laughs> yeah. without it. Uh, but, but, okay, this is a very simple example. I have a label and a couple of buttons. Mm -hmm. Click on the button and then it changes the label. Nice. Why is it changing over? Oh, I have I I, I have a log to help me debug. So when okay. when, things, when things happens, it may spit out a log message over here in the other window. Mm -hmm. The tree was kind of hard to build, uh, partly because things were hard to debug. Mm -hmm. uh, another example is this. Uh, so in terms of layout, so there's a, so the way to do this kind of layout, this concept that I implement is the concept of stretch. I can give an element stretch, <laughs> a, a, a property of stretch, and you can stretch in the x okay. direction or stretch in the y direction, and that will okay. tell the framework or not the framework actually. This is this is handled by the vertical panel and the horizontal panel. Okay. That that the perform layout. So like so like this the first example here, what we have so here sure. this is a uh, vertical vertical box. Okay. Uh, and then, but this this is a horizontal box, a, a vertical panel and horizontal panel actually. Okay. So mm -hmm. a horizontal panel and vertical panel. But right now the these elements do not have stretch, so that it, it, so it's like the, the amount of space given to the button is based on what the button thinks it needs. 
Okay. And based on the text that's on the button. Let's talk about render first. Um, okay. There's a lot of, like building a UI framework is kind of complicated. Um, I, I tried this a couple of times and it usually gets to a level of complication that it's like, ah, oh, there's a lot of problems here. Um, okay. And, and then I forget about that project for a while. But, uh, but I, have, I still have a bunch of prototypes lying around. One very difficult part is negotiation, negotiation of sizes of things. First of all, your, your UI is composed of a tree. So in this case, is I have a V panel, which contains a H panel, okay. uh, which contains a, I think this tree, I put it in a V panel. Okay. For, interesting reasons uh, okay. and then there's a tree and then the, the, there's a tree and the tree has a label in it uh, which has the string a in it and the okay. and the, the tree has children the three, the tree has three child trees uh, and then each each of the child trees have a label and so forth so basically it's a at the top level is structured as a tree, very much like the DOM. And I imagine most most of the UI frameworks are done this way. And then this D has more children inside it. Okay. This has a couple more trees. And, and then the question is, how do we figure out what what uh, coordinates, what dimensions each of these uh, elements are going to occupy on the screen. That, that's the uh -huh. question. That's the question, right? Like, how do I figure out that? So it's the question, like, whether the parent has to figure out where, how large they should be, depending on the children, or the children have to figure out how large they should be, depending on the parent. Both, right? It's a negotiation process, and that's the part okay. that's difficult because. Don't click. Okay, so this is more or less the UI tree I have. You can think of it like a DOM tree. It's more or less the same thing. It's yeah. really the mm -hmm. same thing. Uh, yeah. Um, and but but now like in your browser, your CSS engine or your rendering engine, it has to figure this out. Uh, but because I'm making this framework, I have to write code to figure this out. Um, right. And the way I decided to do it is. I have two separate phases. I have the placement phase and then the draw phase, the drawing. Okay. Phase. Uh, the placement phase will will walk the tree and figure out where each element should be on the screen. And then the okay. draw is walk the tree one more time, tell each element to draw itself. Okay. based on where we have already decided it is on the screen. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and one of the things that makes the placement very difficult is because there's this two-way uh, two -way negotiation that has to happen. Like for example, these two buttons, they know what size they want to be based on the amount of text they have. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm right. sizing the button based on the text here. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so that means the the parent can't really tell the child what size it should be at, right. until consulting the child. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, so how do you do that? There's uh, but but then but then after the child after the parent consults the child what size it should be, the parent also has to parent sometimes the parent wants to override that maybe um in some cases maybe like the parent wants to say well actually i want you even though you say you only need this much i actually prefer you to stretch all the way out maybe oh right maybe the parent wants to say that and how, how do you do that each each of my ui components or ui elements have to abide by this protocol uh, that and, and one of the protocols is uh, place there's this place method each component uh -huh. 
is expected to have. Okay. Um, so the framework is going to call into your place method and then it's going to tell you, I want to place you here, th these x, y coordinates. Uh -huh. And you can at most take up that much space based on max width and max height. Okay. Uh, I, when I implemented stretch, I added that as a parameter. Uh, uh, the stretch tells you, hey, I want you to stretch to as much space as is allowed. So when, when mm -hmm. I want you to stretch, and stretch can either be in the x direction, the y direction, or both. Okay. Yeah, so, so this is the stretch. So if you're stretching, then I want you to take up sort of all of this space here. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and then, um, oh, and also after the placement phase, after I have called place on you, I'm expecting, this is part of the protocol, you should have set your own x, y, width, and height attributes. Like now, now you, should, you should have these set correctly. Okay. And then, and then later on, I can expect these to be present um in order to know where you are on the screen gotcha uh okay and this, and this is a re recursive method so if if your component has children then i expect you to recursively call place on your children where, where it makes sense to do so okay so how does so the max width and the max height has to do with the parent, so the parent will provide you the max width and the max height. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. At the very top level, the 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 framework is gonna call into the root element and call place on it. Right. And tell it your max width and max height is that is the screen's max the screen's width and height. Right. So the structure is like we we're gonna call we're gonna call place on this guy with the maximum space, with the size of the screen. And then I'm gonna expect this guy to call place on this, and this guy is gonna call place on this, etc. And it goes through the entire tree. Um, oh. If it's a very simple component, like a label, the place method for label, it's saying, okay, uh, whatever you say is the x, y, I'll set myself to that x y. Most of the time, that is the case. <laughs> I okay. can't think of a case where you just don't accept the x and y that you're given. Uh, if I'm told to stretch, as if I'm supposed to be stretching in the x direction, then I'm just my width is just going to be the max width. Uh, but if I'm not stretching, then mm -hmm. my width is the minimum between the max width and the length of my text. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So if I, that's that's why these buttons are that small. It just fits to its text perfectly because gotcha. it's using that the length of my text. And then here it's just saying, yeah, if I'm stretching in the y direction, I'll take all of it. But otherwise, it's just one. I'm just I, I'm not doing multi-line text yet. The label is just okay. Simple. So it's just uh -huh. gotcha. And then. And then this is a border. So th this border is like used for the border on this button. Uh huh. So this border is saying, uh, well, I have a content that's inside of me. I'm going to mm -hmm. add that as my child. Okay. Um, and then when I'm being placed, I'm going to say, okay, I'll just take the X and Y as given. And I'll call place on my child, my, my content. Okay. But, but I'm going to give it a max width that's two less than my max width because I need to leave space for my border. Okay, that makes sense. And then and, and this is the same for the height. So it's, it just gives its child less space than it has itself. So it's, there's space to draw the border. And then, uh, and then my width is my contents width plus two. Yeah, so, okay. so these, these are the simple cases. Uh, uh -huh. And then the button uses um, button uses the border actually.
So the border is basically like a panel with a border. Yes, I wanted it to be composable. So the, okay. the, the thing, yeah, that makes sense. that's a style that I kind of like, but I, I don't know if it ends up being practical or not. Yeah, because if the other way is like, oh, a bordered panel will inherit from like a basic panel if you want to do it with inheritance. Yeah, but if, I, if, you, I think. if you make a different panel, um, you just swap it in to, yeah. to where you're calling the, pan, calling the border. If you make a different border, you just swap in that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I, I think this is uh, suitable for the composition because if you because your mind is like, oh, this UI is just a different uh, combination of the blocks. So yes. you put the block. So it's like very, I guess, straightforward in that sense to do the composition. Yeah, yeah. There, there, I had some design goals in mind. I, I would say my design goals are, um, I, I decided to call this OUI, which in French, it's we. Oui. <laughs> I thought that was cute. Um, yeah, like, for sure. But um, uh, one is, yeah, composition. So, so I, I, I sort of implicitly banned inheritance. Okay. I, I just, at one point in my career, I decided, because I, I hear things from the Gang of Four book and other, and other people, and, and also from my own experience of working with code base that are sort of in bad shape, partially because of inheritance. Um, okay. At one point in my career, I just decided to, hey, whenever I feel like using inheritance, I'm going to try to not do it. Like sort of take a, take a diet from inheritance. And I, I think I, I, like at this point, I feel like that's the right way to do it. That, that's, the, that, that's the good way to go. So, okay. so I'm just not going to use inheritance. Um, However, I've I've just seen m most of the UI frameworks um, uh, probably exclude Angular and React from that. I, I think those are different. But most of the desktop-based UI frameworks that I've seen use inheritance very pervasively. So okay. I, I, that's something I want to really avoid. Um, another design goal is I want a small core, like a, a simple small core. I don't know if I can I can achieve that or not, but so far it's still small, but I only been working on it for a couple of days. I want it to be like easy to understand, like for, that goes along with the simple small core, I think. So maybe these are the only two. Um, so I don't know if, I have achieved that or not. Some some of the some of the things about UI frameworks are just kind of hairy and, and I haven't even gotten into like cursor focus and text okay. input, like typing in like you have text fields and you you can focus on a text field and type into them and maybe have a mm -hmm. tap to go through the text fields. I haven't gotten to that that stuff yet. That could get kind of complex. Um, one of the one of the complex things I've done so far is the tree stuff. And when oh yeah, when you click on a tree, um, nice. how to how to notify the screen to update. And currently, what I do is when you click. Oh, first oh, there's the events. There's the well, uh, we might not have time to keep going. I have to go. Okay. Yeah. But I guess like it's good that we have layouts covered. Maybe we can talk about event next time. Okay. Yeah, let's do that.